I'm Gary Backlin, and we're just north of the town of Ladysmith across the harbor. And our property is about 70 acres in size. Um, we have quite a wide ranging operation, including uh, milling um, hardwoods like maple and alder and arbutus, some cedar and fir. We also do maple syrup, and we do um, sequoia greens, arbutus branches and we also do native plant nursery uh, and plant rescue. Now, for people that have small properties, 10 acres, 25 acres, 100 acres, or um, you know, under, under thousands of acres, uh, managing your property is quite different than, than commercial forestry. It, it just doesn't make sense to try and, and do massive clear cuts on a small piece of property. And you need to try and get um, value. If you just ship logs, you're going to make a little bit of money. But if you can turn those logs into a product or at least lumber, you're going to make more money, um, your value added. And you might be able to support yourself on a small piece of property. There are always firewood um, opportunities on a small property for selling firewood. Um, lumber, as I mentioned before, is, is usually quite lucrative, especially if you dry it and then sell it for woodworking. Um, floral greens, um, anywhere from Salau, Oregon, grape, um, cedar boughs, sequoia boughs, all sorts of things like that, another income. So there's many things you can do um, on a small property to make a, a living or part of a living. The um, equipment we've solved a little bit ourselves. When we first started, we used um, a boat trailer and a farm tractor and we'd roll logs with PVs and then as time came by we actually managed to find a backhoe fairly affordable and, and an old uh, lumber truck that we could haul logs with. Um, neither one were very expensive so if, if you watch you can find the right equipment and they are making equipment now more and more for small-scale forestry which is great. Um, we've been doing this for about 24 years now. We've thinned. We've the property when we first got it was what you call backlogged. Somebody in the 1940s had come in and taken the best trees and left the undesirables to grow. So we had our work cut out for ourselves, harvesting a lot of the undesirables, uh, doing infill planting, and then we planted um, a lot of the sequoias um, with the idea that we harvest them for lumber, but well, of course, we're taking greens from them too. So it's, it's a slow process. Um, we don't believe in doing a short rotation, so a lot of the trees um, we won't harvest in our lifetime. Um, so economically, we need to find things that will bring money in in the short term. And that's one of the problems with small-scale forestry is you may have an income every five or ten years, and it's hard to run a business that way. So We've looked to little things like the maple syrup, to the, uh, the saw milling of lumber, um, to the floral greens and the arbutus branches, and the native plant nursery, so that we can have an income every year and not just every time we harvest a, a bunch of trees. We looked at whether this property could support us without working outside the home, and it probably could have, but because I'm a journeyman carpenter, there was always work calling me, and so we found it more interesting to do part-time off the property and part-time work on the property. I, I feel we could make a full-time living off of the 70 acres if we wanted to. Um, it's just, it, it is a lot of work. It's, it's like farming in a sense. You work quite hard, and you're tired at the end of the day, and as you get older, it's not quite as much fun. When we first bought the property um, and decided we were going to practice small-scale forestry, we did a management and working plan and we identified the values that we wanted. And number one was recreation. We wanted our property to be park-like. We wanted it to be a home for hiking and a place that we'd enjoy. And we also wanted um, a mixed species, bio biodiverse stand. We wanted uneven age. And so we've managed our forest not for the highest dollar value, 